In this video, three simple basic problems are taken to explain the basic concepts of electromagnetic propagation. So all these three problems will be addressed here. In the first one, a uniform plane wave is given in terms of electric field intensity then you have to find the direction of the wave propagation and the direction of magnetic field H. So first, we shall address this problem. And in the second one, which is almost similar to the first one, but we have to write an equation for H in complete form, not only the direction, but also the magnitude has to be calculated. In the problem three, the propagation constant of the medium is required. Let us start with the first problem. E is given and it is having Y component. So the electric field can be expressed in its full form, that is in vector form as 10 sine of 2 pi into 10 power 8 t minus beta x a y cap. So this equation is in standard form and I always advise to compare the given equations of E and H with their standard forms that is omega t minus beta x a y cap. So by comparing the standard equations of the fields, we can get many terms from there. For example, in this problem, the amplitude of electric field is 10 omega is 2 pi into 10 power 8 radians per second. Beta is not given. This x and this unit vector will keep on changing problem to problem. So now from this one, we can identify that this x indicates the direction of wave propagation and here it is minus. So the direction of wave propagation is positive x axis. So here neg this negative sign indicates that wave is traveling in forward direction that is from transmitter to receiver. So the direction of the wave propagation has to be taken as positive x. If this was plus, then we would have taken it as a negative x. So the answer for the first part, that is the direction of wave propagation, direction of wave propagation, propagation is along the positive x axis that is we can indicate it in terms of unit vector a cap x so that makes the answer for that part it's easy to identify from this one next one is same way the direction of e is direction of electric field is a cap y, which is indicated here. And in the problem, it is given as a subscript. Subscript. Next, the direction of H magnetic field can be calculated from these two informations. So when you want to find the direction of H, that is, what is the direction of H to go by this relation of pointing vector. 
that is E cross H equal to P. Electric field, magnetic field and P stands for pointing vector are the electromagnetic wave vector. So here we can write the directions of the given quantity that is direction of electric field is positive Y and we have to find this direction of H and direction of P is positive X. So from the concept of transverse waves, we have understood that the direction of electric field, magnetic field and the pointing vector are perpendicular to each other. So electric field, magnetic field and the wave propagation direction all are perpendicular to each other. So based on that, this is Y and X. So H should be either plus or minus Z. So we can identify whether it is plus Z or minus Z based on many ideas. The shortcut is go by this representation. Yeah. So if you take the cross product in this direction, that is, let us say a cap x cross a cap y, it's always equal to a cap z. Similarly, a cap y cross a cap z is equal to a cap x. If you take it in the reverse order, that is a cap x cross a cap z should be taken as minus a cap y. So anti-clockwise direction is representing positive sign, whereas clockwise is negative sign. Otherwise also, you can think of in this direction, that is cross product of A cap X with A cap Y will give Z, A cap Z. A cap Y with A cap Z will give X. So if you keep this order, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. So the cross product between these two will be positive Z. Cross product between these two will be positive X. Cross product between these two will be positive Z. And the reverse is negative. That means, that means AY cross AX should be taken as minus AZ. So whichever is convenient, we can do that one here. We can easily identify that after y, what we expect here is z. So this is x. See, look at this order. First one is y. This is y. And second one, you don't know. Third one is x. Y, x is there. So the sequence is correct. The middle one must be z. So that is why the direction of magnetic field is a cap z. If this was not the case, it should have been taken as negative unit vector. So the direction of the magnetic field is positive Z direction. Now the second problem, same way, E is given here completely. We have to find H. And uh, E and H are related through intrinsic impedance. That is H is equal to E by eta or E is equal to eta times H. Use any of these two relations. But only thing is we have to take care of the direction explicitly, right? Because the direction of E and direction of H will not be same. So if you write this equation in vector form like this, this gives us some wrong information that H and E will be having same directions. So it's not the case. That's why what I suggest is that go magnitude wise. Then we have to decide the direction ourselves using the method we adopted in the part one. Let us try this way. So we have to find H. So we go by this equation. 
h is equal to a by eta okay next what is e what is given in the problem part number seven is given here 10 cube sin omega t minus beta z a y this is the complete e but the medium is free space free space so e is 10 cube sin of omega t minus beta z a cap y then what h should be h is equal to e by eta and I that is 10 cube divided by 377 because the intrinsic impedance of free space is 377 ohms are 120 pi ohms so 10 cube by 377 will give the magnitude or amplitude of h the sinusoidal equation remains same this one you have to decide what should be the direction of h so we shall find in the same way what we have done the earlier case use this relation e cross h is equal to p direction of e see the direction of e is here y and this z will tell the direction of p that is positive z then this should be here y is there z is there what is missing is x so this position should be occupied by plus r minus x so you have to decide now check the order here y is there x y z x y z so first y is there and after y it should be z here after z it should be x but here is x is not there z is there so our order is disturbed so you have to take the negative sign you have to take the negative sign otherwise even the easier way is this one this is the better one better method look at the order correct right so a y if you assume this as time being a x temporarily then a y cross a x equal to a z check that one a y cross a x is equal to a z this is the clockwise opposite to our assumption so that's why this should be minus so this should be minus so a y cross a x a y cross a x cannot be a z a y cross a x cannot be a z any one of these three terms must be negative any one so possibility is only for the middle one the last and first one are already fixed so that is why that is why here we should take it as a cap x so the complete answer final answer what we can write is the h vector finally 10 cube divided by 377 ohms sine of omega t minus beta z it's a practice to write the minus sign with amplitude and this is ax cap amplitude m's per beta so this makes the answer for the second problem now let us get into the last part we have to find the propagation constant uh, generally it is denoted as gamma which is given by alpha plus j beta frequency is given 95.5 megahertz but the medium is mentioned as free space for free space for free space free space is also a lossless medium alpha must be zero so that's why gamma is equal to j times beta but for free space beta is given by the relation omega into 
root of mu naught into epsilon naught right this can be easily evaluated from known values omega this becomes finally omega by c because this is the velocity of light nothing but velocity of electromagnetic waves in free space which is equal to this relation so c is equal to 1 by root of mu naught epsilon naught numerically this value is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second so that's why this makes a simple relation easy to calculate now omega becomes 2 pi f f is given as 95.5 megahertz and divided by c value is 3 into 10 power 8 so this gives us the value 2 per meter so gamma the propagation constant which is containing only phase change beta phase shift that means when the wave propagates in a free space only phase changes amplitude does not change because alpha equal to zero no attenuation takes place lossless medium so that's about it that's about the answer for these three simple problems hope you understood thank you